I am Dr. Raglan, Dean of Zombie Hunter University. This is the third in a series of lectures on the scientific minimalist approach to dead frontier weapons. Today's topic is chainsaws. Chainsaws are grinding weapons that deliver nearly 9 hits per second. They can be used defensively to escape from dangerous situations, or offensively to earn experience by killing zombies. As a group, chainsaws are the most straightforward weapons in Dead Frontier. Unlike other weapons, there is never a case in which students must weigh the advantages and disadvantages of upgrading to a new chainsaw. There is never, for example, a trade-off between less damage per hit in exchange for more damage per second. Chainsaws with higher proficiency requirements are, quite simply, always more powerful than their predecessors. The only reasons not to upgrade are cost and stat requirements. Chainsaws are closely related to melee weapons, so it makes sense to discuss their similarities. Melee proficiency enables students to equip both melee weapons and chainsaws. Chainsaws and melee must be used up close. Chainsaws and melee use no ammunition, therefore chainsaws and melee do not need to reload. Both chainsaws and melee rely on critical stat points to increase the number of critical hits, which deliver five times the damage of regular hits. When optimized, both weapons deliver critical hits 80% of the time. Neither chainsaws nor melee require stat points in reloading or accuracy. There are some differences as well. Most melee weapons are very high critical chance, needing only 80 points in the critical stat to optimize the number of critical hits. All chainsaws are high critical chance, which means they need 112 points in the critical stat. Unlike melee weapons, chainsaws require stat points for strength. The heaviest chainsaws require 50 points. The advantages and disadvantages of chainsaws are similar to those of melee weapons. Basically, in exchange for not having to worry about ammunition and reloading, students are at greater risk of being wounded because they must use weapons at close range. The unique advantage of chainsaws is that they do not require a separate proficiency. Students putting points in melee proficiency can equip two weapons, melee for looting and chainsaws for grinding. Students using other weapons will take twice as long to equip a good looting weapon and a good grinding weapon because they must invest points in two different proficiencies. Though chainsaws are more stat-hungry than melee, this is not an impediment to equipping them. Chainsaws require more points in critical, but students planning to use rifles, automatic pistols, and or submachine guns will need to raise their critical stat so high anyway that no additional points will be needed for chainsaws. Therefore, the only investment necessary exclusively for chainsaws is stat points in strength, 25 points to bring the total up to 50. This can be achieved without shortchanging other stats. This makes chainsaws very appealing for freshmen and sophomores in the early stages of developing a build. As with melee, our recommendations for chainsaws are based on the threats that students will face in each of the different colored zones illustrated on the map of Fairview. The blue zones around Nastia's holdout are inhabited by slow, weak zombies that can easily be dispatched. The first available chainsaw, the Dilmar PS, is too weak to be useful. Instead, we recommend the Ronin Pro. This chainsaw requires 60 proficiency points in melee and 35 stat points in strength. Like all chainsaws, it requires 112 stat points in critical to optimize the number of critical hits to 80%. When optimized, the Ronin Pro delivers 54 damage points per second, which is more than enough to terminate any and all blue zone zombies. The Ronin Pro also does well in the green zones against burned zombies, irradiated zombies, and blood dogs, although these require more skill. So-called normal zombies fall after a quick sweep of the chainsaw, less than one full second of contact. The stronger green zone zombies are not so quickly dispatched. Students must learn to get in close and circle for a few seconds to neutralize these threats, trying as much as possible to maintain continuous contact with the targets. In the case of irradiated zombies, this is particularly dangerous because these creatures expel radioactive vomit that can seriously injure anyone standing in front. Learn to attack from the side and try to stay behind the target as much as possible. Zombies tend to turn in the direction from which they are attacked, so it is possible to predict their movements. By constantly striking from one side, 
Students can fool the zombies into turning continually, making it relatively easy to circle them and avoid their attacks. In yellow zones, the Ronin Pro remains adequate for dealing with normal zombies. However, students will find themselves facing dangerous mutant varieties, reapers with long scythe-like arms, and bones with armored bodies. One-on-one, -on -one, neither is too dangerous to attack with a Ronin Pro, but as the zombie population increases, the chance of facing swarms filled with these threats becomes greater. In high aggro situations, bones can overwhelm with their speed and resilience, outrunning the crowd to attack careless students. Reapers are slower, and they tend to get stuck in the middle of crowds, but their long arms can inflict damage while students circle on the edge of swarms. In both cases, students need to deliver as much damage as quickly as possible whenever an opportunity presents itself. For this reason, we recommend upgrading to a Steel MS-800. This 80 proficiency weapon requires 40 stat points and strength, in exchange for which it delivers 72 damage points per second. This is enough to kill Bones and Reapers with a little less than 4 seconds of contact. This is still dangerous, but with a little practice it becomes a worthwhile risk. It certainly helps to be wearing decent armor and to have some extra points in endurance, because students are unlikely to complete the encounter without taking a hit or two. One possible strategy is, instead of circling, run away in a straight line to get the swarm following. As they do, they will thin out, making it possible to reverse direction, sideswiping the zombies with the chainsaw on passant. With luck, slower zombies such as the Reapers will not be shielded by the crowd, providing an opportunity to get in and grind them for a few continuous seconds instead of taking brief swipes. In yellow zones, students must also be aware of small bloats, which explode upon death. There is no way to terminate these zombies up close without being injured in the process. With good armor and high endurance, students can survive the injury. However, we recommend withdrawing to a safe distance to kill them with a rifle or a pistol. Using chainsaws becomes increasingly dangerous in orange zones because of the appearance of spiders and tendrils. Not only are these zombies hard to kill, they are fast, making them difficult to outmaneuver. Therefore, it is best to upgrade to a chainsaw that can kill them more quickly. The 100 proficiency grinder requires 50 strength, the most needed to equip any chainsaw. The grinder delivers 108 damage points per second, so it can kill spiders and tendrils with less than 3 seconds of contact. Decreasing the length of the encounter increases the chances of killing the targets before they inflict damage. A circling attack is useful against these threats, especially if there is more than one at a time. A great advantage of the chainsaw is their continuous attack. Students who keep their weapons in contact with their targets will keep the zombies stunned, making it harder for the zombies to counterattack. Another tactic is a straight retreat, mentioned previously. As long as the spiders and tendrils attack in a straight line, the grinder will knock them back. This method will take longer to kill the zombies because the chainsaw will not be in continuous contact, but this can be safer than circling, which keeps students in close proximity to crowds where false steps can be disastrous. The danger of a straight retreat is that there may be zombies waiting in the direction one is retreating. Also, if too many spiders, tendrils, and blood dogs pile up, they can push each other forward, negating the knockback of the grinder. In this case, zigzagging and dodging around obstructions such as cars and fences will thin the crowd. In orange zones, large bloats replace small bloats. These creatures inflict even more damage when they explode upon death. It is best to kill them with a ranged weapon, but students with high endurance and strong armor can get away with killing one or two up close. At first glance, the red zones seem too dangerous for chainsaws, not only because of new zombies, but also because of the denser population, including more tendrils and spiders. However, a little practice and a weapon upgrade will enable students to continue using chainsaws. The Steel 090 works very well against the long arms and rumblers that first appear in red zones. This 110 proficiency chainsaw delivers 144 damage points per second, enough to grind through either of these new threats in less than two seconds of contact. Not only can students grind with chainsaws, they can also loot. This sounds paradoxical, but it makes sense. Chainsaws attract the attention of nearby zombies, but unlike other grinding weapons, they do not provoke massive swarms of aggro. Using chainsaws, it is possible to clear the street around a loot spot, then grab the loot before more zombies show up. 
This technique will work in previous zones of Fairview, but the strategy is not necessary in areas with fewer zombies where silent looting with melee works perfectly well. In red zones, it is difficult to walk down the streets without drawing some attention. After killing one or two zombies near a loot spot, students may find more zombies showing up to interfere. The slow process of killing them one by one with melee does not always work, at which point switching to chainsaws provides a viable solution. Like the grinder, the Steel 090 requires 50 points in strength, as do all subsequent chainsaws. Students who have come this far with chainsaws might as well continue increasing melee proficiency to equip bigger and better weapons. In the Black Zones, long arms and rumblers are joined by five new species of zombies. Black long arms, irradiated long arms, flesh hounds, black rumblers, and irradiated rumblers. Although these creatures proliferate like common zombies, they are as strong and as dangerous as mutant varieties. In particular, the irradiated rumbler, another zombie that explodes upon death, is a major impediment to grinding with chainsaws. Irradiated rumblers are so prevalent and inflict so much damage that students may opt to forego chainsaws altogether. We do not blame students who consider a stat reset at this point to switch from chainsaws to some other grinding weapon. However, chainsaws can work even in black zones. The highest possible damage per second is recommended, so students should upgrade to the most powerful chainsaw they can afford. The Ripsaw G12 is a 120 proficiency weapon that delivers 216 damage points per second. Contrary to chainsaw naysayers, it is surprisingly effective in black zones. The Ripsaw can take out local zombies with less than two seconds of contact, and it can be used to seriously wound irradiated rumblers before finishing them off with a rifle or a pistol. The Gortooth, also a 120 proficiency weapon, is an absolute monster, delivering 288 damage points per second. Basically, it slices through black zone threats as easily as the Ronin Pro diced through normal zombies in the blue and green zones. The only more powerful chainsaws are expensive, unique, and limited edition items beyond the grasp of impoverished students. Fortunately, they are not necessary. The Gortooth will handle black zone threats quite nicely, and it is also useful for boss hunting. In the white zones near Sekronom Bunker, normal zombies disappear. So do regular long arms and rumblers. Only the strongest zombies survive here, including flesh hounds and the black and irradiated species of long arms and rumblers. Conventional wisdom dictates that chainsaws are useless in these areas. However, courageous students will find that they can still use chainsaws effectively. The proliferation of explosive and spitting zombies makes it dangerous to grind with chainsaws for extended periods. Sooner or later, accidents will happen, resulting in serious injury. Nevertheless, chainsaws can punch a hole to safety, and they can fend off swarms while a student retreats. Chainsaws also serve as a supplement to other grinding weapons, such as machine guns and shotguns. In most aggro situations, there will be occasional lulls, during which continuous firing is a waste of ammunition. At these times, switching to chainsaws allows students to continue grinding while saving ammo for the next wave of attackers. With their effective combination of knockback and damage per second, chainsaws excel at defeating weaker bosses, such as titans and mothers, though the latter is another exploding zombie that should be finished off from a safe distance. In the hands of a skilled student, chainsaws can also work against the more dangerous wraiths and giant spiders. We would not recommend using chainsaws against the faster flaming wraiths or flaming giant spiders, but students who dare to face these opponents can triumph with the aid of speed enhancement drugs. Chainsaws are most useful early in Dead Frontier when they provide an effective grinding option for freshman and sophomore students who have yet to earn enough stat and proficiency points to equip and optimize machine guns, shotguns, or grenade launchers. Later, junior and seniors may rethink their commitment to chainsaws, preferring weapons that do not put them in close proximity to the dangers encountered farther east in Fairview. Nevertheless, chainsaws remain useful supplementary tools even in black and white zones. Admittedly, students using chainsaws are more likely to be injured and require medical attention. They are also more likely to have their armor damaged and require repair. However, a cost-benefit analysis reveals that these expenses more than pay for themselves thanks to the money saved on expensive ammunition. In the final analysis, chainsaws provide a greater challenge for thrill-seekers who prefer to live dangerously. Mm.